Hello and welcome back to another video in my sound design and synthesis series. Today we're going to be creating synth brass inspired by the great synthesizers and songs of the 80s and 90s. As always, I'm going to start by showing you a demonstration of the sound, but don't be put off if you don't have Serum, which is the synth I'm using. I use this because all the controls are really easy to find no matter which synth you're using, you should be able to recreate this patch. So let's take a listen. I won't play anymore in case I get a copyright strike, but I think you get the idea. This synth is a lot more versatile than that, so if I simply open up the filter you can let a lot more high frequencies through, voice the chords a little bit different, and it sounds like this. <laughs> So you can hear that depending on how you play it, which register and octave you play in, you can get a whole variety of different emotion and expression out of this synth. So let's waste no time and find out how to make it. Go to the menu up here, initialize preset. This just starts with a basic saw wave. So what I'm going to do is go to default analog, and then I'm just going to select basic shapes. So you can see in any synthesizer, you should have access to signs, saws, triangles. So I'm just going to select this saw wave. And I'm also going to turn on the same for oscillator B. Technically it is the same as the default wave shape, I just prefer when it looks like this. Initially it sounds like this. It's far too much high end for me, so I'm going to go to the filter and turn it on. I'm going to make sure that both oscillator A and oscillator B are routed through the filter. And then I'm going to take the cutoff down just a little bit so that it sounds a little bit smoother to start off with. Okay, I might increase that just a little bit. Wonderful. Now if you go to the second oscillator, so that they're not playing exactly the same thing, we're going to create a little bit of width and movement between the two oscillators by increasing the fine tuning of oscillator B. So in your synth, look for detune, unison detune, any sort of parameter or control like that. So let's take a listen. I'm just going to push it up to about 10 or so, and hopefully you can hear all the different phasing and warping and sort of wrongness that that introduces to the sound. That's going to be quite a fundamental part of this sound. Then I'm going to add some voices of unison. I don't like having too many voices of unison for brass. I'm going to put two voices of unison on the first oscillator and pull the detune down to about 0.1. Then I'm going to have three voices of unison on oscillator B and I'm going to pull the detune down to about 0.1 again. Let's take a listen. What I've noticed when playing a lot of analog synthesizers is they don't often have that many voices. They tend to sort of trick and fake stereo width by using unison detune and also by using chorus and phaser effects. But I think if we start adding too many voices right now, the sound is cool, but it starts sounding too modern and not so vintage and analog. Now I'm going to show you the settings for the amplitude or volume envelope. So in Serum, this happens to be envelope 1 by default. I'm going to start by setting the attack to around 15 milliseconds or so. Then I'm going to go over to the decay and move that into around 300 milliseconds, give or take. Then I'm going to take the sustain down just a few dB, maybe 2 or 3 decibels. And then to the release, I'm going to add about 200 milliseconds. So if I zoom in using this slider at the side, this is what our amplitude envelope looks like. So how you set this release and the tension of this curve really dictates how the sound fades away. If I push it all the way up, this is just dragging this point in the middle, left click. Sounds like this, whereas if I give it a bit more tension... So bear that in mind if you want to fine tune the sound later. The next parameters I want to set are the filter envelope controls, which I'm going to assign to envelope 2. So going back to the filter, especially the filter cutoff that we set up earlier, let's just drag this all the way to zero. Then going back to envelope 2, I'm going to left click here and drag that onto the cutoff. Now this envelope is controlling this cutoff. To give you a demonstration, right now with a very short attack, the filter opens immediately. Whereas if I give it a long attack, say a second, you can hear that the filter takes a lot longer to open up. So what we're going to do is set the attack to around 100 milliseconds. We're going to leave the hold where it is, the decay to about 1.3, 1.4 seconds, and the sustain down to about 70%. And then the release, I'm going to add maybe another two or 300 milliseconds of release. So now we have that classic pluck that comes from the filter. And if I play in lower octaves, 
just setting up one envelope to control the cutoff and we've got all this uh, sort of punch and pluck in the sound and I think it sounds really really good. Something that I forgot to mention was that I'm leaving the filter where it is, so it was a Moog low pass 12 dB per octave filter. If you were to choose a higher, uh, say 24 dB per octave, it starts cutting out too much of the high end and it starts sounding a little bit artificial, so I'll show you what I mean. And you're left with a sound that's a bit more like a pad than a brassy sound, whereas if I were to select, say, a low 6, you're just very gently taming the high end, and I think 12's a good medium, but just pick what's best for your sound. And also, just like most of my patches, if you want, add a little bit of drive to this filter. You've got to be careful. I think making this sound a bit too crunchy isn't a good thing, but a little bit of drive. But I think adding just a little bit of texture, a little bit of attitude to the sound can be okay, so I'll put the drive at about 20%. This next step is absolutely critical, and I hope you try to do this with more of your patches in Serum, because it really brings them to life. And it's just to assign the velocity of how you play on your keyboard or your piano roll to the actual level of the oscillators. So I'm going to turn both of the oscillators down to zero on the level, so I'm getting no sound out of it. On the velocity, I'm just going to left click and drag and assign it to both of these here. This makes the synth dramatically more responsive to how you play. So if I play softly, we've got a quiet sound, whereas if I strike the keys harder, we get the whole sound. What you can also do is link a velocity to the filter cutoff again, so that if you play harder on the keys, it's a brighter sound, and if you play softer, it's a more muted sound. But that's something I'll leave out of this patch, because it's a bit more specific to your patch and if you want it or not. Next step is that we're going to go to the FX section and I'm going to add a filter. This time I'm going to keep it on MG low pass and this is just a cutoff to cut out excess high end. So if the song you're playing doesn't require much high end, just set that all the way down here and just play whatever you like. You, you might want like a really muted brass sound or you might want to open it up. So I would use this filter to make it fit into your track and leave this original filter alone because if you start messing with this it starts really changing the shape of the whole sound whereas adjusting this one simply affects the sort of tonal balance of the high end of the sound. So just to have a little play just to show you the sort of sound we're at right now. Higher octaves. I mentioned earlier that we were going to add more width with like chorus and other effects, so I'm just going to turn on a chorus. And remember that all of these effects don't have to be loaded inside your synth. You could simply drag these onto your mixer channel, use EQs, chorus, reverb, guitar pedals, anything. It will give you a lot more control. So I'm going to turn the mix all the way up just so you can hear this. And then we're going to turn the depth down. And then we're going to make sure that the rate isn't too high. If the rate's too high, it starts sounding silly. Now that's a bit too wide, so I'm going to pull the mix back in a bit to halfway. So let's hear with and without. So you can hear it. it is subtle, depending on what you're listening on, but these sorts of effects add up to make quite a big difference overall. Next thing we're going to do is add on a bit of reverb. All I'm going to do is cut out a lot of the low end, and I'm probably just going to leave it roughly where it is. More mix. It's a bit too much for me. That reverb just helps put the synth in a different acoustic space. Depending on your mix, you might want a completely dry brass sound, or you might want to absolutely drench it in reverb. It's entirely up to you. The same is true of delay. I like adding a subtle ping pong delay, where I drag this down and that filters out some of the top end and some of the low end. And I just like having a subtle eighth note or a quarter note. I'm going to turn the mix up so that you hear this. If I play a very short chord, you can hear that delay ping-ponging between your headphones or your speakers. And then if I play a much longer chord, it just adds all this swirl and dimension to it. it. Just adds to the reverb and just takes the sound away. So I'm going to pull the mix down a little bit. I find that playing with this helps me sort of play in the groove and it fills up some of the little gaps in the rhythm, just makes things a little bit more interesting. But it is just an extra sound, it's not absolutely critical. So that is most of the sound, but I want to show you two or three ways to modify it. The first is that you can use these basic saw waves, 
but they can sound a little bit boring. You can find waves that have a lot more texture. So for instance, if I go to the analog, I like this sort of saw rounded, and I'm also going to select that for the first oscillator as well. And this naturally rounds out the sound without the need for too much filtering. So just take a listen. Even if I push that up a bit, I can take the filter off. And it's just like a much more uh, soft and gentle brass sound without the need for too much excessive filtering using EQs or filters. So do experiment with different types of saw waves and adding imperfection into them because the saw waves that are inside these uh, classic analog synthesizers they're very rarely perfect, they're often very textured, rounded off, jaggedy, they've got all sorts of extra harmonic content, and in many ways Serum is a little bit too perfect, a little bit too clean to make sounds like this, so if you can dirty it up, add a little bit of drift, just make it sound a little bit different. Uh, we don't need to go for perfection with these synths, it's better that they sound interesting. The second way to modify it is to adjust the attack of envelope one. So right now we have a very quick attack. As soon as I press the keys, sound is generated. But if I just push the attack up a little bit, and then push it up a little bit more, you can start getting sounds that are more like pads, more like atmospheres or that works around your groove and your beat. So you might find, especially if you want to use brass in the lower octaves as a bass, you might want to add a teeny little bit of attack to sort of emulate a sidechain effect so that if your kick and your bass note hit at the same time, instead of sidechaining, just give a touch of attack to the bass and it means that the two just naturally fit around each other. You've got to be careful with it, but I always find that it's a pretty... Uh, solid technique. So that's all for designing this patch, but what I want to say is this and a load of other new patches will be included in another free update for my Serum sound bank in the mix Serum Essentials. I'm finalizing all the new presets over the next fortnight, so please leave comments in the comment section asking me what sounds you want me to put in there. Maybe there's a synthesizer in your favorite song or from your favorite artist and you want me to emulate it and put it in the pack. Let me know and I'll work hard to try and put that in the pack as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.